Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope y'all are doing well. Today we're gonna design a proximity service app similar to Yelp. Here is a map from the Yelp app where you can see that the app is showing a bunch of local businesses around a user's current location. Similarly, you can see here I have a Google search where if you search for a particular business, Google knows your location, your current location and it's gonna display a few of the local businesses around the user. The high level features that we are gonna keep in mind when designing the app is gonna be primarily the one you really should care about is knowing a user's location. You wanna return the top X points of interest near the user. In our case, the points of interest is gonna be a bunch of local businesses, but you can easily use the same system we designed for any other kind of points of interest that you might have. Once we have the list of businesses, we should be able to filter them by either the category of the business or the rating of the business. And of course, on the other side, business owners who want to add a new business should be able to add the new business easily. Once they add the new business, users who are looking for businesses should be able to search for the business too. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna start is, uh, we are gonna start with a naive design. This is gonna be like, let me just zoom out. Okay, this is gonna be the first pass uh, or the first attempt we make in designing the app. So this is very straightforward. You can see we have the client at the top and then the load balancer and then the API server. The way that, and then at the bottom, you see the MySQL table and we're calling it the business table. The way this is working is when the user goes to their device, so it can be their phone or their browser, and let's say they hit search or whatever the button is, the client is gonna make a request to the slash business endpoint with the latitude and longitude of the user along with their user ID. It hits our load balancer. Our load balancer figures out which instance of the API server it wants to hit and then it forwards the request to that API server. The API server is connected to a MySQL database or it can be a Postgres or any kind of relational database. Once it hits the, uh, when, once the load balancer forwards the request to the API server, the API server is, query the My, is gonna query the MySQL table and then return a list of businesses that are around the user. So very straightforward, we just have one API that's talking to one MySQL table and then returning the result to the client. Okay, when it comes to the database design, we can have something like you see over here. I'm gonna zoom in one level, there you go. So it's very simple, you have a straightforward relational table with the ID, name of the business and the latitude and longitude. Of course, you, ha you can have many other uh, details about the business, but to keep things simple, I'm just having these four columns. The main thing we're gonna focus on is the latitude and longitude and how this can change depending on how much performance you wanna get out of your application. The other things you can just stack on top of it, but our main focus is gonna be designing this database correctly so that the queries can be uh, executed very, very quickly. Okay. So let's look at an example of how this is gonna work. Let's say when the client is making the request to our backend, we get the user's location. By that I mean, we get the user's latitude and longitude. In our case, let's say it's like 10 and 120. And what the user wants is to find businesses within five miles of them, right? So whatever their current location is, we want to be able to show them businesses that are within five miles of the user. Given the design we talked about, so the database with uh, name, latitude, and longitude, we could perform a query like this, which is going to be a select star from business. And then you have a where clause that does latitude, latitude between the user's latitude and whatever the radius is, and then the user's longitude and whatever the radius is for whatever the longitude is for the radius okay this will uh this query is going to return you a bunch of businesses and then you just return them to the front end okay so if you take a look at it this should work uh 
there there might be a few edge cases, but fundamentally this should give the user a list of businesses, but it's not gonna be performant at all. And this is gonna be impossible for you to scale up. Okay, so let's talk about what is really wrong about this approach and why it's not gonna work. Firstly, the query is gonna be tremendously slow. When you're doing a between clause similar to that, it is gonna be not performant at all. That's because you're gonna end up scanning too many rows. Because if you're looking at a latitude and longitude uh, query, you're essentially gonna be scanning, you're gonna be scanning significantly more rows than you actually need. And the between operator in itself is not gonna be performant because you have to scan a chunk of rows rather than knowing exactly where to go and look. Okay, so even with the, even if you decide to put some index on latitude and longitude, you're still gonna be scanning a lot of rows. But apart from the scanning, relational databases like MySQL and Postgres don't really do very well when it comes to doing comparisons or any kind of computation on floating point numbers. That's because our latitude and longitude are going to be floating points, even though over here I'm talking about 10 and 120. The, both the latitude and longitude are real numbers, so they can take in pretty much any uh, decimals. It can be like 10.5 and 120.4. They can even be signed or unsigned, so you can have like minus 120. For operations like that, especially dealing with floating point numbers, MySQL and Postgres does not really do very well. It takes quite a long time uh, as opposed to doing a straightforward string comparison or an integer comparison. Lastly, this does not scale well with traffic at all. For an app like this, you might get peak traffics. So it's going to be like uh, the, the traffic pattern of your app is going to be spiky. So for instance, during lunchtime or dinner time, you might have a lot of people coming to the app. At other times, you might not have too much. But if you are querying the database every single time a user needs some data, during the peak hours, your app is going to perform very poorly for most users because at that point, your bottleneck is going to be the database query. Okay. So these are the things that don't really work with this naive approach. So let's try to improve this gradually. Okay. So the first thing uh, we need to talk about when discussing the improvement is going to be how can we replace the latitude and longitude that you see over here. That is the first bottleneck because our query is significantly slow, mostly because of floating point numbers and doing scanning so many rows using the between operator. So we can use something called a geohash instead of latitude and longitude for each business. I do have another video about geohashing, which I uploaded like last week, I think. I'm gonna put a link of that in the description. So if you don't know what geohashing is, I would recommend checking that out. I am gonna go over geohash a tiny bit, but there is way more to it than I'm gonna go into in this video. So if you don't understand the explanation here, I would recommend pausing this and then going and checking the geohash video first. So a oh, what I'm going to zoom in. There you go. So essentially in geohashing, what you do is you start with level one where you divide the world into four cells and you give each of the cell uh, an identifier. So in our case, we have zero, one, two, and three. And then you, for each of the cells, you go into them and divide them into four more. So two becomes two, zero, two, one, two, two, and two, three. And then again, you do four more. So one, three becomes one, three, zero, one, three, one, one, three, two, and one, three, three. So you keep zooming in. And as you zoom into the map, you keep on adding uh, letters or digits to it. Okay. So every single uh, cell, even if you go like the deepest possible, every single cell is going to have a unique identifier. To give you an example, this is the map of San Francisco. And you can see that we zoomed in to like one, two, three, four, five. We zoomed in five levels. And then after zooming in five levels, this is the, uh, this is the size of each of the cell. And you can see that all of the cell starts with 9Q8. Uh, does it start with 9Q8Y? Yeah, it, it starts with 9Q8Y. 
and then the only thing changing from cell to cell is the last one. Uh, so B, C, F, G. So for every uh, latitude and longitude, you can find the geohash that that latitude and longitude kind of uh, stays in, okay? So uh, we are gonna improve the database design now. So from, uh, we, we started with latitude and longitude for each business. From that, we are going to storing the geohash, okay? The geohash can be, I think, up to 10 or 11 characters, the whole geohash, but we don't really need all of them. I'm gonna talk about that in a bit, but we can just store like five or six. So what is the steps now? Before that, let, let's go into this. So what essentially happens is for a given user, let's say if you want to find all businesses within, uh, let's say within 10 miles of the user, you can go ahead and use this chart to figure out how many characters in the geohash that you want to match with. So the more, uh, the more characters you match, by match, I mean matching the user's geohash with the geohashes of the local businesses around them. So the more prefix or the more characters that you match, the closer the businesses are to the user. If you're matching only the first character, you're gonna get like all businesses within like the one, one quarter of the world. Then you have two, three, four, five. So it's very typical if you want to get businesses within like five to 10 miles of the user. What you want is match for the first four characters, first five or first six. That should give you the business that you want. You could start with something very specific. So if you match the first six, that's gonna give you, I think, businesses that are within one to three miles of the user. Let's say you don't have find enough, you don't find enough businesses. Then you can move on to matching five instead of six. This is gonna expand your search area to businesses uh, 10 miles within the user. If you still don't find enough, you can expand again and match only four. But yeah, that's how geohashing kind of works. Once again, I do have a video on it, so I would highly recommend checking that out. I do go through end-to-end -end examples, so I think it's better if you watch that to understand this better. All right, so let's talk about the steps now in this improved design. So at the beginning, your user will give you a location. From the phones, you usually get a latitude and longitude. In your API server, you can easily use a geohash function. There are multiple libraries and Python, JavaScript packages that you can use, or you can write your own if you want to. To that geohash function, if you pass in the latitude and longitude, it can spit out the geohash. So it's gonna give you the full geohash, which is like 10 to 12 characters, I think. So in your backend, what you do is compute the user's uh, complete geohash, so all 12 digits from the latitude and longitude of the user. You decide how many characters to match depending on how close or far you want, as we talked about. You can start from matching the first six characters, which is going to give you businesses within, I think, one to two miles. And then if you don't find enough businesses, you can move on to matching five and then matching four. Now, talking about matching, let's see how the query is going to be. Let's say you decided that you want to match the first three characters. Okay. In that case, in this new table, you can do a select star from business where geohash like 9Q8, uh, 9q8 and then the percentage a regular expression what this is going to give you is all the businesses in your table uh, whose geohash starts with 9q8 which means that this is going to give you all businesses around the user that's going to be within uh, i think like 10 to 20 miles or something like that if you want it more if you want it closer you can do like you add one more of the user's geohash, now you get even closer. If you want to get even closer, you add another, stuff like that. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Now, why is this better than what we had with the latitude and longitude? Firstly, the SQL query that you see here is significantly better. If you compare this with what we had before, which was this with the between operator and operating on floating point numbers. 
where we, whereas over here, we are just doing a like clause and comparing with a string. So comparing the two queries, this one is gonna be significantly quicker than the other one. One of the reason for this being quicker is here we're doing string comparison rather than floating point comparisons like we were doing before. And also if we just add an index on our geo hash, we will be scanning way less rows than we would for that floating point number in the previous design. Now, even though this approach is better, the question is, can we do even better than this? A few of the reasons that I think we can is the like operator that we're using in SQL can still be slow. Ideally, you want to be doing an equals operator where the database can optimize the query because it knows where exactly your data is. So the like operator is better than what we had before with between and floating point numbers. However, it can still be improved upon. Secondly, every single request right now is still making a uh, query, a, a database query, which can of course be a bottleneck. That's because during peak hours, when you have a lot of people going on their uh, mobile phones, they will be uh, making a request to your backend. And for every request, you are going to be querying your database. So, and in our case, it's a relational table. So it's also not going to be very straightforward to scale up and down uh, easily. So uh, we are going to talk about two different solutions. The first one is going to be related to the SQL query. And the next one is going to be related to how we can avoid querying the database every single time. So the first solution is going to be related to improving the query. Okay. Now let's see. Usually we need only a few miles around the user. So if your user, I don't think you really want to find out local businesses. That's more than 10 miles around you because that's like too far. So Ideally, we need like one mile that's like very close to the user. Then we have five miles and then 10 miles. So if we uh, kind of put that in. Uh, so if we take that and try to figure out how many uh, geohash prefix do we need to match for the different distances, this is how it looks. If you want businesses within one mile of the user, you want to match the first six characters of the geohash between the user's geohash and the business's geohash. If you want within five miles, then you want to match the first five characters of the geohash. If you want within 10 miles, then you want to match the first four characters of the geohash. We should never need to match anything more or less than this because our app for, for our app, one within one mile, within five mile, and within 10 mile should be all you need. We don't need more than that. We don't need less than that. Of course, if you did, you can look at the other prefix, but in our case, we are gonna go with the assumption that this is enough for our case. So why not just tore the prefix directly? The main reason we were doing a like query here is because we were storing the whole geohash so we had to use a like query to give you like the first X amount of prefix that we actually need to match. And then we were using the percentage uh, operator to tell it that I don't care about the rest of the string. Okay, something like that. But instead of doing this, when we know that all we need is the first four characters, first five and first six, why don't we just go ahead and store them separately? so that we can easily do a equals operator rather than a like operator. So this is how your new table is gonna look like. We're gonna have geohash underscore six, which is gonna have the first six characters, and then geohash five, which is gonna have the first five, and then geohash four, which is gonna have the first four. Now, if you want businesses around one mile of the user, you can easily do a select star from business where geohash six equals and then you put in the exact six uh, characters of the user's geohash. Uh, let's say you uh, execute that query and you don't find enough businesses. You can expand your search now by making another query where you query the geohash. Let me just zoom in. Okay, so now you query the geohash five column and then match it against the user's first five characters. Let's say you still don't find enough. 
you can go ahead and expand it even more and now you query the geohash four column okay so for the best performance you can go ahead and put an index on all three of the geohash columns this way when you're reading uh, your uh, when you're reading the table the performance is going to be very very quick because uh, if you have indexes on three on all three of the columns it's going to be very easy for you to know where exactly the businesses are with that geohash prefix however one thing is going to one thing to note is going to be that if you add three indexes on all three of the columns your writes are going to be slower but in my opinion it is acceptable to uh, have slower writes because the read to write ratio is going to be very very going to be high or low read to write ratio is going to be very high because you'll have significantly more number of reads than writes because it's not very often that businesses are going to be added to the table however it's going to be very often that users will want to read a certain group of businesses from the table okay so this should give you the best performance, in my opinion, uh, when it comes to designing the data like this. So we went from, let's go all the way back up. We, we went from storing the latitude and longitude of the business to storing the full geohash of the business to denormalizing the geohash based on the prefix of the geohash into six, five, and four, which corresponds to businesses near uh, Let's see, one mile of the user, five mile of the user, and 10 mile of the user. Okay, and if you add three indexes, your reads should be very, very quick. Writes should be a tiny bit slower, but it's acceptable because your app is gonna have significantly more reads than writes. Now, solution two. This, uh, now we have optimized the query and we know that the query is gonna be very quick. But if you recall, if I go back up, uh, uh, not here. Uh, there you go. So we addressed this, which is improving our SQL query from a like operator to an equals operator. Well, the next thing is going to be, even though our database now is significantly better, it's still, the, the, the way it's designed right now, the backend is still going to talk to our database and make a query every single time someone goes to the app. Now this is what we're going to address. So is there a way we can avoid querying the database every single time? Okay. All right. So that's where solution two comes in. So in our existing design, still every request is hitting the database, which can be slow, especially during peak hours, the database will be overwhelmed because every request is going to be querying the database. So can we do better than that? And the answer is yes, we can. And the way we do that is by adding a few layers of caching. More specifically, what I can think of is we have four distinct caches. The first one is gonna be the business information. Uh, when I talk about caches, you can either use Redis, Memcache, or any other caching technology out there. The first cache is gonna be for, I'm gonna zoom in. The first cache is gonna be with business information. The key is going to be the business ID and the value is going to be something like a dictionary with all the information about that business that the front end needs to show the user a business. The next cache is going to be a geohash length six cache, which is going to the key is going to be the first six characters of the geohash of the business. And then the, uh, the value is going to be a list of all businesses with that geohash. Similarly, uh, geohash length five. So the key is gonna be the first five characters of a particular geohash. And the val value is gonna be a list of all business IDs with that geohash. Similarly for geohash length four. Now let's see how does it look like in this new system with the cache. We're gonna start from the top, which is your client. The client makes a request to the load balancer with the latitude and longitude of the user. And then the load balancer forwards the request to the API server. Now the API server doesn't need to query the database at all. All it needs to do is go and look at the geohash cache that uh, we have. We have three cache with geohash six, five, and four. We can get uh, the different business IDs at different distances. 
from the cache. So we can talk to the Geohash uh, 6 cache to give all businesses within one mile of the user. Then we can talk to the Geohash 5 cache to get all businesses within five miles of the user. And then we can talk to the Geohash 4 cache to get all businesses within uh, 10 miles of the user. Once we get all those business IDs, depending on how many we get back, we can go ahead and talk to the business information cache to get the other details about the business, given we have the business ID. Okay, uh, so just to recap all the steps again, what does the API server do once it gets a request? It computes the geohash of the user. This can be done very straightforward with a Python library. Once you have the geohash uh, of the user, the server is going to go ahead and talk to the Redis cache, depending on what prefix of the geohash that you want, right? So if you want businesses within one mile, you talk to the geohash six cache. If you want businesses within five miles, you talk to the geohash five cache. And if you want businesses within 10 miles, you talk to the geohash four cache. So depending on that, you talk to one of them or all three of them because it's cache it should be very quickly uh, and then get the business ids now once you have the business ids you can go ahead and make a, a query to the other business information cache to you, you can pass it all the business ids and then get all the other business information like maybe the price or the menu or the hours or the category stuff like that once you get those, the API can go ahead and do some filtering. So if the user wanted only four star businesses, we can do the filtering over there. If the user wanted a particular category, we can do some filtration there too. Once the API server does the required fil filtering, it goes ahead and returns a JSON list with all the businesses that the user can actually see. Okay. So that's how the end-to-end -end flow is going to look like when a user goes to the app to see what businesses are there around them. Now let's look at the other side of thing, which is going to be if a business owner wants to add a new business to your application, how do they do that? Okay. A few things to note about this adding a new business flow. The first thing is compared to retrieving local businesses, creating a new business should be orders of magnitude less because you have a lot of people going to the app to find businesses, but you won't have that many, nearly that many users trying to add new businesses to your application. Business locations are more or less static because a business tends to be usually at one place. It doesn't move around all the time. So you can make the assumption that the location of a business won't really change too much. The next one is it's not super important to start returning this new business immediately because once a business is added, of course, uh, ideally you want to start showing it to the users immediately. But given uh, if we had to choose between that or uh, showing the user a set of business quickly, you would choose the latter because the main goal is for the user to see a list of businesses quickly, not to make sure that new businesses are being shown immediately. And lastly, we can afford to do a few things asynchronously because as I mentioned before, we are not showing the business immediately of being added. So this is how the uh, system's gonna look like. Let me zoom in one more, there you go. Okay, so this is the flow of a user adding a business. We're gonna start from the left, the left. The client makes a post request to the business endpoint with all the details about that business. The load balancer forwards that request to our API server. The first thing the API server does is add the business row to our MySQL business table. This is going to be the table we talked about. In our case, we have an ID, name, and geohash. But of course, in a real table, you'll have a bunch of other things. So the first thing the API server does is store the data of the business in our relational table. Now, uh, we will, there are many videos we talked about this already, but most of the time in your infrastructure, it's very good to have some kind of uh, stream processing pipeline 
that listens to every single change happening to your database. A very good way to do this is with Kafka, where every single time a row changes in your MySQL table or Postgres table, so it can be a row changing or a new row being added or a row being deleted. Every single time something like that happens, your uh, database is going to write a message in a Kafka topic. Okay, it's called CDC, which means change data capture. But this is a good way for everyone who wants to stay updated with your data. They can just subscribe to that Kafka topic and then take different actions based on what changed. So step four is going to be whenever the new business gets added to the table, a new message gets written to a topic on Kafka. Okay. And now you can have different stream processors or consumers listening to the stream or listening to the topic so that anytime a row gets added, the consumer gets notified. Okay. So in our case, in step five, we're going to have a post processing, uh, post processing consumer, which is specifically listening to the Kafka topic for messages related to a new business being added. Once there is a message in there, the consumer can go ahead and consume the message. Now it has all the information related to the related to the business that was just inserted into the database. Okay. The first thing it does is based on the geo hash, it goes ahead and adds this new business ID to all three of our geo hash caches. Once it does that, it's, it goes ahead and stores uh, this new business in our business information cache too. This is going to be the mapping between a business ID and all the other information related to that business. At this point, we should have all the data both in our geohash cache and our business information cache. So at this point, the business should be ready to be shown to the user whenever a user searches uh, for nearby businesses. So of course, as I talked about, this is not going to be immediate. It totally depends on how much latency is between step four and step seven. But in a scalable system where you have a solid pipeline built, this should be almost immediate. Of course, if you have a certain scenario where you have tons of people creating new businesses at the same time, there might be some latency. But in uh, on average, your business, your new business should start showing up to users very, very quickly because this whole process from step four to step seven, this is not some kind of a batch process. This is a stream process. So everything is happening in near real time. OK, uh, so, yeah, I think that pretty much sums up both the flows. We talked about both adding a new business by a business owner and also a normal consumer trying to find local businesses around them. So hopefully this was helpful. I am going to go ahead and turn this note to a PDF and have it linked in the description below. So if you want to just keep it for reference later on, feel free to download the PDF. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and I'm going to get back to you. Uh, I'm going to try to get back to you as soon as I can. With that being said, I hope this was helpful and I hope you guys have a good rest of the day and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.